Welcome to Spectrum Perspectives, real talk with parents, professionals, and autism advocates with your host, Cindy Gellermini. Hi, and welcome to Spectrum Perspectives. Today, I'm going to be bringing on Carolina Denhart, who is a divorce attorney in the state of New Jersey. And since many of the moms that I've interviewed are divorced, I decided I need to bring on a professional to talk about this subject. And she's going to give you some helpful tips and advice. And she's even going to give you her personal cell phone number if you need any help. Hi, everybody. This is Cindy with another episode of Spectrum Perspectives. And today we are here with Carolina Denhart. She is a, an attorney, and I'm going to let her explain to you what exactly she does. But the reason that I'm interviewing her today is because the first half a dozen moms that I have interviewed on my show have all been divorced. They're all raising autistic kids as single moms. And I said, I need to bring Carolina in to talk about this whole issue. Um, so I'm sure that there are probably moms out there that are about to go through a divorce um, or maybe with an 80% divorce rate, it, it's unfortunately, it's almost inevitable. So I like them to be prepared ahead of time. And Carolina is an expert at talking to women about this, about being prepared ahead of time. So welcome, Carolina, to the show. Thank you so much. And I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your audience. You know, I find myself very uniquely positioned to be able to speak about this topic because being an attorney, and I'm a partner at Linda Berry McCormick in the matrimonial group, but I also do a lot of international work for families and children, is that it's my second career. My first career focused on helping individuals with developmental disabilities, aging out diapers, youth, and people on the spectrum. So I come to you with an experience in both uh, areas. And I find that it is critical that when going through a divorce and you have a child with special needs, that you not only speak to an estate planning attorney, because there's so many issues around support, but how do you navigate the divorce where two parents might be getting divorced because of the stress that's placed upon the family because of the special needs child? You may love your child more than anything in the world, but imagine the stressors, the expense, the ability to perhaps not be able to help or the inability that you may not be able to help as much as you want. Your child is aging out of the system. You're worried about finances. On top of that, now divorce happened. So I think that this population of parents that have children with, um, with autism especially really have to take a long look when marriage comes to an end and really slowly approach all the issues because this becomes one of the biggest issues in the divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um I remember years ago, I heard you talk, you gave 10 bullet points to women, um, how to be prepared ahead of time, because a lot of them are blindsided by a husband suddenly asking for divorce, and they've never even paid a mortgage or a bill ahead of time. And you always, and you give great tips for really any woman. I mean, I learned from you, I, I immediately went out and opened my own bank account and learned how to become a little bit more independent just because you never know, you know? So can yeah. you kind of go through that for them? Absolutely. And, you know, and again, this was my own experience, right? I, I went to law school after my own divorce. And although I have a master's in counseling psych and thought of myself as an educated uh, partner in my marriage, it turns out I didn't even know how to read a tax return. I, I wasn't equipped to deal with anything. So as my career advanced in the law and I saw myself and my clients coming in and saying things to me like, you know, Carolina, will I be able to keep my house? Am I going to lose health insurance? Can he take the kids? Because I don't work. My credit score is non-existent. All those questions led me to form a platform called Divorce Dynasty, which is made up of vetted professionals, bankers, lawyers, doctors, you name it, that step in to help. And the pillars of Divorce Dynasty are prepare, protect, partner to prosper. And that preparation, Cindy, is what you're talking about. And we did a talk in Short Hills. This is probably going on eight years ago at this yeah. point about the fact that you but have I still to remember it. <laughs> it was, yes, it was the David Letterman top 10 list of what every woman needs to know to protect her assets. You start with the fireproof box. You start with bank account statements. If you don't know where you're banking, you have a little bit of work to do. Insurance policies. If you don't know where they are, you have to call the broker. And so we were preparing women to start assembling the documents, not to get overwhelmed with what they mean, not to necessarily understand them, but to at least get them so we could start the conversation. And it was eye-opening to me how so many of the women, we had about 50, 60 women in the lobby of Bud Larner at the time, all came forward saying, I have a credit card. I'm an authorized user on my husband's Amex. I spend, he pays the bill. I don't know. 
Well, imagine that conversation now when your husband comes home and says, you know, the marriage is over, I'm getting a divorce. And that's a nice way to do it, by the way. Some you just serve you with divorce papers, right? And then what if he cuts off the credit card? What if you don't know where you're banking? What if you don't have an ATM card? What if you were literally living on a on an allowance? And that person now takes that allowance away. And you have an autistic child to raise on top of that where you're paying out of pocket to the doctors and you're relying on, on access to that card. It's, it's a tumbling effect. It's a spiraling effect. And our roles as what you do, what I do, Divorce Dynasty, is to help answer the questions, take the fear out of what might happen and get these women on a path of empowerment and access to the right professionals. Yep. So, so, um, give us a couple things that maybe they could be doing right now. So they, they should, like you said, the, uh, uh, the firebox, right. To know what's in there, right. As Absolutely. far as insurance, bank accounts, things like that. Yes. Get the fireproof box, get the dividers A through Z, you know, old school grammar school organization, right. Uh, run your credit report and credit karma. It's free. See what accounts are open in your name. See what your credit score is. Uh, try to fill out something called a case information statement, which any you can find it online in the court system website or any divorce attorney could give this to you. But try to see if you could fill in information about your life. Do you know if you have a mortgage? Do you know if you have a second mortgage? Are your taxes included in your mortgage? Uh, what are your taxes? How much do you pay your landscaper? Do you have uh, long-term health care insurance? What do you spend and how do you pay those bills? And if you sit down and you find yourself saying, my God, I just don't know. I know that I drive my car. I know that I fill it with gas. I know that I go to the food store, but I have no idea. Are there retirement assets? Do you have a special needs trust for a child that has a special need? If every answer is, I don't know, then it's time to sit down with your spouse and have that conversation. If you get resistance, oh, honey, don't worry. Then you come at it and say, well, I am worried because anything could happen. If you get resistance by saying it's none of your business, well, then you have to have a different conversation and likely see somebody mm -hmm. like myself because something's going awry. Right. But the time to start putting your house in order is not the day that your house falls apart. And that's why Divorce Dynasty is about preparation because in that moment, you're at your weakest. You are most scared. And that's not the time to start gathering the information. It's the time on a beautiful, you know, uh, summer day where you have calm in your life. And it is overwhelming, but it's a start. And it's very empowering as you fill your box with the information. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I also say to clients, open up your own credit card. If you haven't worked and you don't have your own credit score building and you're only an authorized user, open up a little credit card, charge on it, pay it down every month to build your credit. You need to be an identifiable, desirable candidate for a loan post-divorce, right? You have now been married. You may now be single. What does that mean? Credit is precious, especially in a world or in a state like New Jersey where everything's so expensive. So you need to be a viable candidate to banking industries to say, yes, we'll give you a loan or even to get that first credit card. Mm -hmm. So little baby steps to become an independent, identifiable person in your own world. Um, I can tell you this doesn't only apply to divorce. I mean, look at the pandemic and people are losing family members, okay? And it's sudden, right? And I went through this personally. I didn't lose the spouse, but I lost my son. And it happened in a second out of nowhere. And the next thing you know, you're sitting in a funeral home and they want to make arrangements and you have to, and they expect you to write a check on the spot. And I've told parents, I said, you better be prepared for that because you just don't know. I mean... I'm telling you, you have to go out and buy a headstone. You have to make all these plans. And thank God, my husband had already inherited a, a plot at the cemetery. We didn't have to worry about that. But I, after that, I tried to tell parents of special needs kids. I said, listen, I know you don't want to think about this. Okay. I, I, I understand this is your worst nightmare, but you have to be prepared ahead of time. Because like you said, suddenly you'll be in shock. And when you're in shock, you, you can't even wrap your head around well, how, what money is in my bank account. Blah, 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 blah. You know, if things are laid out ahead of time, it's going to make that time a whole lot easier. Absolutely. And these are very difficult conversations to have with yourself mm -hmm. and to have with your spouse or to have with your family members. Mortality is the one topic that most people really want to avoid worse than the divorce word. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are options out there. You can buy insurance policies. You could buy an insurance policy to cover funeral costs, especially if you're dealing with a an individual that's not healthy, you, you have to prepare. 
And the younger you are in doing so, the more affordable these life insurance policies or other policies may be. But if you don't know how much it will cost you and you're not prepared, now you're in a panic mode. And especially if on top of that, you're going through a divorce where your assets might be locked up because you're going through a divorce. So you may not even be able to go to the bank to get that HELOC on your house to pull money out to now bury your family member. It becomes an avalanche, which is why it's critical to have these conversations, hard conversations in advance. Yeah. And I know that <clears throat> through you that women have been, that have been blindsided by divorce, um, the women is blindsided, but the men typically prepare at least six months ahead of time. They know it's coming and they start moving money around and they start, you know, they start preparing ahead of time. And then, so what can women look for to start understanding if their husbands are planning and hiding money and stuff ahead of time for the divorce? You know, and, and we're having a, a one-sided conversation right now because you certainly have followed my career and you've seen and you've heard me talk that there is a predominant uh, especially in, in our in our area here that, you know, it's the men that file for divorce and, and they are better prepared. And I've seen that obviously, right? I would say, and that's called divorce planning and it's not legal. And if we could prove it, then there's an issue within the divorce itself. But if things start changing all of a sudden, like more credit card debt is being accrued, you're putting more of your groceries and your expenses on a credit card where maybe before it was being paid, uh, you know, through the regular checking account. If all of a sudden somebody's taking out a home equity line of credit on the house without talking to you first and explaining why. A lot of people took out HELOCs during COVID saying, well, God forbid I lose my job, interest rates are low, let's have a little bit of a cushion. That's a conversation. But if all of a sudden you see a new encumbrance on the property, new credit card debt, uh, changes in job uh, payment, you have somebody saying, well, you know, I'm gonna be paid more in stock and less in cash. Any type of change to the cash flow and the way expenses are paid is a red flag. Of course, obviously, if you have somebody, you know, all of a sudden not coming home and traveling more and they didn't travel before, well, there might be an affair going on. And although cheating per se doesn't really matter in the state of New Jersey because it's a reconcilable differences, if someone is all of a sudden spending money on a new girlfriend or boyfriend and taking away from the marital pot, we may have an issue there. So I always like to put my uh, you know, psychology hat on and say, identify and observe changes in behavior and the way that you pay your bills. That's a sure sign that something is awry. Right. Um, so let's focus on special needs now where people that have special needs kids, um, if they are going through a divorce and let's say it's just irreconcilable differences, whatever, and they're, they, they're going to split, um, how does that come to the table, you know, as far as um, dividing money or whatever, taking care of therapies, things like that? Like, what would they need to know? So just like any divorce, you have to identify all the money coming in and all the money going out. And in this document that I refer to as the case information statement, there's a Schedule C that talks about all these expenses, right? Things that are covered by insurance and things that are not. It becomes a line item that needs to be addressed as part of the divorce. So if dad earns 60% of the income and mom earns 40% of the income, this additional expense for, let's call him Johnny, uh, will be shared pro rata. There's different ways to negotiate. Somebody could pick up more of the expense in lieu of, of giving up something else, but it has to be discussed in such a way as follows. What are the needs now? What services is our child getting from the state of New Jersey? Will that child age out? If they age out, are there any other pockets of money we could tap into? And where will they be living? Who will incur the cost? Are there special chairs and machines? And so you almost have to do a separate inventory of all those expenses. And then if it's something we can't settle and we have to go before a judge, and let's say that this is a trial for divorce, it becomes an issue. It becomes an issue because maybe mom says, I can't work or I could only work part-time because I'm taking care of my disabled child. And dad's gonna say, well, there's a program, you should go to work, you should help support yourself. It becomes a back and forth. We certainly take a look at how has the family been functioning as a family unit. We then have to take a part at how much money's in the marital pot now that there's two households. That one paycheck is only gonna stretch so far. What can mom do if she was the caregiver to contribute? And if she can't, how else can we be providing for this child? Which is why adult child usually, you know, in, in these situations, which is why through Divorce Dynasty, we bring in other professionals, nonprofits, agencies, liaisons to schools, liaisons to the government to see what we could put together as a package 
that's going to ultimately impact the divorce because any money that is coming in by way of non-income from the parents is going to offset some of that burden on the parents. So it becomes a case within a case. And certainly uh, it's highly recommended that the parents try to settle through attorneys and through mediation rather than battle this out in court. Divorce is already expensive. Getting a custody expert is already expensive. And if you have expenses to care for your disabled child on top of that, you might bankrupt yourself doing this. So it's critical that there's people around the table that are going to be neutral sounding boards, educated on what's available for the special population to help craft uh, this final property settlement agreement and custody arrangement. Well, I follow um, moms on Facebook pages, you know, um, for autism and things like that. And I've seen some moms make comments about how the moms are pretty much raising the kids by themselves. They have to take them to the therapies all the time. I don't know how I can work and take them to therapies um, because things have changed. I mean, I used to send Robbie off to school and he got all his therapies while he's at school. It doesn't work that way now. And the moms have to take them all over the place for all their therapies. And they'll make a comment like, how can I get my the, the deadbeat dad to, to show up, you know, to, to pay for the therapies? Or it's not even just to pay. It's like they can't do it alone. They need someone to help them. They can't work a full-time job and take their kids to therapy by themselves. Yeah, well, which is why it's critical and I say this to my clients all the time, when you are divorcing and you're drafting that marital settlement agreement and that custody and parenting time consent judgment, you need to put your money behind this because that document of who pays what and who has Johnny when and who's responsible, it's critical. If you do a loosey goosey agreement, oh, we'll figure it out later. Don't worry, I'll help you. You know, Let's not spend the money on the lawyers. You're going to be back. You're now coming in post judgment. You already have a document that says the dad is off the hook on this, this, and this. And now you're trying to change that. You have to prove a change in circumstance. It is more expensive and more difficult. So for the moms that are saying he's not helping, we take a look at what was the original arrangement? Was he supposed to help? Or was there an offset financially where you were going to take all this on, but he was going to pay? If you have an agreement and it says he's got to pay, he's not paying, well, then we're going in on enforcement, which is a lot easier to do than to try to change an agreement. Judge, I didn't know. I know the agreement's not good, but you know, I need help. Judges don't want to hear that. Divorce is a contract, right? So we have to do it right initially. But certainly it is a lot easier to go in on an enforcement application saying paragraph seven says this, paragraph nine says this, he's not picking up the child, he's not paying, uh, make the payments go through probation. And we have different tools to chase people, but first we need to have something to chase them for. So what I see in a lot of these cases is that the original agreements are not written properly. Women are overwhelmed. They don't wanna spend money on lawyers when they're first getting divorced. Uh, if the husband left them, they're already dealing with being abandoned, being rejected, you know, all of these emotional issues for them as women. And now on top of that, there's this issue with the child that has special needs. And a lot of them just want to run and hide. I just want to be done. I just want to be done. Just tell them, leave me the house. I want to be done. Well, sometimes leaving you the house sets you up for failure because if you're not getting the right support, you can't afford the house. So it's critical that at the time that this happens, you get your right team in place. It's critical. Yeah, this is, this is what I want moms to know is exactly this conversation. Like you have to look forward and you have to say, what is my life going to look like a year from now, five years from now? And they need to understand that you cannot do it alone. So they need to set this up in the agreement ahead of time. Either he has to be there and do it and pay for it, or he has to pay for you to have a caregiver full time in the house to help you take care because it really takes two people and more to care for these kids. You can't do it alone. So they have to set this up ahead of time somehow. Absolutely. And, and they're, you know, the therapists have to be identified, the form of payment, who's going to maintain the insurance for the children post-divorce, what are the co-pays, what additional supports are necessary. Like think about it this way. When mom and dad are in the house, let's, let's assume that they were both hands-on in some way, right? Those two hands are now gone. So out of four hands, you now have two. So there's got to be, I mean, like logically thinking, there has to be somebody that helps that mom. And so whether it's, you know, work-related childcare expenses or just a need for the child, it just can't be a run-of-the-mill regular child support analysis. There's additional expenses, which by the way, the child support guidelines allow for us to calculate. And it's, it's, it's critical that it happens. You can't leave this up to, well, we'll see how it goes. My mom will help me. My cousin will move in with me. That's all great and good. 
but that doesn't put him or her, depending who the income earner was, on the hook. You can't make your mother come over and help you. You can't make your cousin come over and help you. You know, during divorce, the family sometimes will rile together and say, don't worry, we'll get you through this, save your money. You know, don't pay the lawyers, we'll figure it out. I'm telling you, Cindy, it doesn't work. People yeah. have their own lives and they're overwhelmed with their own situations. And being around children with special needs, especially if they're high on the autistic spectrum, is difficult. It's taxing. And, you know, these family members will often run for the hills and say, look, we love you. We want to help. But we didn't uh, realize how difficult this was. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what would you say to someone who's already in that position? It's they've already been divorced for five, 10 years. They're trying to do it on, the, on their own. You know, uh, how, how can we help them? I would say, you know, definitely contact me. I will offer a complimentary consultation to anyone that comes in through you or Divorce Dynasty. We start with taking a look at the agreements you have in place. We identify if there's violations of the agreement to go after this person uh, in court. And that's, that's a great thing because when somebody is violating an order, we can ask for counsel fees to be paid back to us because you're simply going to court to get something already due to you. You're not asking for something new, right? So although they would need to come up with money to for a retainer and, and you know we could talk about every case is different, some issues are little, some issues are huge, right? Every case is different, but at least come in and have a triage done of your MSA to see what is going on here. Are you entitled to relief or is your agreement so poorly written that we would have to now file a motion for a change of circumstance? And those are also filed. Maybe Johnny was five when she got divorced and now he's 12. There's different needs. There's all sorts of ways to go back into the court system. But the most critical thing for these moms to do is to get the education they need on what their rights are. Mm. You know, sitting at home and being overwhelmed is only going to impact their health, their relationship with their child, their relationship with the, with the doctors, the, the providers. And they're going to sink deeper and deeper and likely go deeper and deeper into debt because they may not be getting the support that either they are entitled to or that they weren't awarded in the first place, which now we need to fight for. So it's like, you know, if your back hurts, you're going to go to a back doctor, right? You're not going to try to fix it yourself. If you have a legal issue on support for your child or whatever's going on post-divorce, you have to come speak to a lawyer. Right. And are there any issues where people that have adult children with special needs, I know how hard it is to get them into a group home. Um, have you ever dealt with a situation like that? Absolutely. So, you know, emancipation in the state of New Jersey is the age of 23, unless there's a special circumstance. And so I've had cases where we have children, it, it's, it's not, I'm not going to, I'm not making light, but it's not as simple as an eating disorder, but eating disorders can be huge issues that impact the child going to college, graduating college, getting out into the world. So we've drafted agreements that follow through way beyond the age of emancipation. If the agreement didn't provide for that, it's going to be very difficult to get the parent that's out somewhere over there remarried living in California to contribute because the original agreement didn't foresee that but maybe then what we could do is help this woman get other services through our vast network uh, to help her to alleviate some of the stress but you know this all goes back to what I say all the time Cindy which is how what does your agreement look like what are your rights when you were getting divorced what did you sign off on the dotted line for what could we now do Right. Coming back 10 years later, if your agreement was either something expired in the agreement or it just wasn't written well, it's harder, right? Because it's a, you're, you're going back to change something. Yeah. Yeah. And for someone that has a five-year-old, they don't want to think about that someday. They don't want to think about, you know, 30 years in the future. But guess what? It's here before you know it. So yeah. they, have, they have to plan that from way ahead of time. You know, and, and, there's, and there's such a strong movement in New Jersey about... Um, very you know, person-centered approaches and people getting monies directly paid to them to have a fee-for-service relationship rather than being in a group home or, or you know, living in a place that's 24-7. That's the dynamic and, and, the, and the, the landscape of people with developmental disabilities and uh, all sorts of disabilities has changed. So parents have to be so educated on, on what this even means and how they're going to get those funds to then buy the services. And is there an expiration? Like what happens? You, you almost... If you don't know what's going on, then put the divorce on hold almost for a moment, right? And figure out what's happening for the services for your child so that when you come to the table, you're educated, not come to the table now and say, well, gee, I guess we've got to figure this out because Johnny's been living at home and, and you know, my husband was on Wall Street. We had enough money and we had two nannies and a caregiver and a therapist. And, and now what? 
that now what is is a really big elephant in the room mm -hmm. yeah well the whole um situation is very stressful i i don't want people to think that divorce is the answer you know because to me it just doubles the amount of problems and issues that you have now like you said you have two households and you know and now the mom's raising the child alone and and all of that so yeah um but well, i want them to be there's, prepared. And there's also there's also things that are going to trigger certain behaviors and certain people that have disabilities right so change uh, new significant others, uh, commuting in a car more so than they were accustomed to, potentially changing a school or a day program. All of these things have to be guided by the right professionals because that professional will almost predict what may happen and what services may need to be in place above and beyond what's already happening. I mean, we don't like change. Imagine someone that is married, for lack of a better term, to a routine. And all of a sudden that routine is the exact opposite right? So we need to think very much outside the box. And the only way that that happens is if you have the right attorney in place and the right professionals in place that speak this language, because law has a specific language, the disability world, world has a specific language, the Social Security Administration has a specific language. It's all very, very tailored to the situation. And if you're going to try to like, you know, go to the local guy that does everything under the sun to get this done, it's going to blow up. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is there um, another person, another attorney that that um, works on behalf of the, of the child or anything that specializes in special needs? Like, do you bring in other people or? Absolutely. We deal with, first of all, we, we deal with the estate planning side of this, right? Because there's a trust that sometimes needs to be set up so, so kids don't lose uh, their benefits from the state or adult children, right? Um, so we work with estate planning lawyers. We work with disability lawyers. Um, we, we work with discrimination lawyers. We work with whomever we need to pull in um, for a given situation. You know, if somebody's on a waiting list and they can't seem to be bumped up and they've been on there for a long time, well, then we try to connect the families with liaisons uh, through the Division of Developmental Disabilities or whomever else to help answer questions. What I find most stressful for these families is that they just want an answer to a question. They just want to know what they can expect. And it's like calling an 800 number during COVID and, and like sitting on the line for three hours, you want to take the phone and throw it out the window, right? So imagine now the stress you're under and now nobody's answering the phone. And then when, when you get them on the phone, they're like, well, you called the wrong number. You have to get the right people in place that are emotionally disconnected that could deal with the 1-800 number and don't get mad, right? right. And help you, right? Because if you try to do all this on your own right now, it's, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's virtually impossible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. And they're already stressed out, you know, leading up to this point. And then it, the, to me, this is just an extra trauma that that's added, you know, and you, and you get brain fog when you're in trauma like that. And how can you even do research and figure all these things out on your own? I just don't no, see how it's possible. It's absolutely not the time. And, and what I say is if you're going to spend a few dollars to pay whomever you need to bring to the table, that's money best spent because you're going to be spending that money either paying for services on your own that you didn't navigate the right way in your divorce to secure, or you're just going to you know, be overpaying for caregivers because you didn't secure the right support system. You'll end up spending it somewhere. So you're better off spending it up front to get the best plan for lack of a better term, right? When I worked in the social social services world, we called it an individual habilitation plan for individuals that we serviced, right? So that plan is not only how that person will, will live their life and what their routine is and where they're going to program, but who do we need to plug in? And then the next level is what will this cost? And if you don't have that in place, how can you come to the negotiation table in your divorce and have the conversation? You can't. So it, it's that's the time to say, I can't do this alone. I'm going to interview some people. I'm going to connect myself to the right people. You, you need the right lawyer to guide this, obviously. Right. Okay. And, and then inevitably what happens is people start, the stress level goes down because just like anything else in life, when you feel like you have a support system, you're walking a little bit taller because you know that you have this one on speed dial, that one on speed dial. Uh, you know, I take calls seven days a week. I'm going to Poland for three weeks. I'm going to be available. This is what we have to do for our clients. It's, it's an obligation. And I feel very strongly about this because of the career that I've had and the personal life that I've had. So you know, I'm very passionate about this.
Yes, I am. Um, I'm going to also be interviewing um, an attorney that does uh, special needs wills and trusts and things like that. And I, I would think that that's somebody good to talk to as well, even if your child is young, just to know what you're looking at in the future. Absolutely. And that's a service that we also offer at Linda Berry McCormick. And one of the great things about coming to a firm such as this is that we are virtually a full service law firm. So when you come in as a client um, of mine, you have access to everybody else. And, and I, you know, help arrange for that. And oftentimes our lawyers will, will offer complimentary uh, information, consultation. We could do a blended, right? You're not going to this guy for this divorce. And they, that that's too much, right? It's, right. it's very nice to keep everything in house. And we like to refer to ourselves as the family lawyers. Your family needs so much more than just a divorce, right? You, you, there's, there's so many things. You might have a family business you're keeping, you might still be working together with your ex-spouse. You might need to set up these trusts and wills. You might have tax issues, right? There, there's so many different things because a family is a family, quote unquote, business, if you will, right? So, so you need a lawyer that's going to be able to help you navigate all that uh, in one concise way, but that also speaks the language of understanding what your child with special needs is facing. Right. So, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this podcast as I'm interviewing moms and seeing what they need, then I'm bringing on professionals like you to address their needs and sort of setting up this whole, um, like your divorce dynasty, basically, it's like I'm, I'm bringing in professionals, listen to what they have to say. These are people that can help you with exactly what you're going through. Um, and just dealing with the stress and everything as well. I just wanted to bring up that I'm planning a retreat weekend, the weekend of October 15th and 16th. And I'm actually um, actually going to be in the country. So oh, you are? I, yes, I am. Oh, good. I, I thought you were going to be away. away. I'm not going, I'm going away. Uh, for the month of September, but I was going to go to Russia in October, not going to happen. COVID is apparently uh, alive and well over there. So I will be local. Right. So I'm so excited uh, to support you in this first retreat. And my firm is as well. And I think that what you're doing is going to really take the stress of so many people to know that they could come into one space for, I don't know if it's one day or two days, mm -hmm. but to essentially walk away so empowered. So yeah. kudos for doing that. Yeah, I just, um, it's based on my own experience. You know, years ago, I got together a group of moms and we all had kids with special needs and we all just laughed the whole time. We just laughed because we were telling stories about our kids, things that you can't talk to other parents about because they don't get it. It's like, you know, you have your friends in at work and you might have your friends over here with your, your neurotypical children, you know, but you don't have friends that have special needs kids. And when we got together, you immediately bond. Um, there's a, it, you know, it's a bond that you you just can't have with other people and you just let your guard down and just relax. So we're going to bring in a professional comedian. He has a child with autism as well. So it's kind of his specialty. So, um, so they're going to laugh and they'll get, they'll make new friends. We're going to have massages. And then I'm going to also bring in my group of all my friends and professionals, people like you that can just, just, um, we're not going to download them with information. It's not a conference. I don't want their head to explode with too much information. It's just an introduction. I just want to introduce you to to everyone and say, Hey, if you need this, if you, if you are about to go through a divorce, you need a good divorce attorney, here you go. Here's Carolina. This is the person that you need to talk to. So I'm really listening. happy to pull together. Preparation. It's the preparation part of, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the divorce dynasty platform. It's, it's critical. You have to prepare for everything in life, everything, right? Everything. And certainly when it comes to your family that may be dissolving your children, you don't have an option but to prepare. So I, I look forward to this. I'm very excited and we will plant enough seeds. I'm probably going to do my David Letterman list, but plant enough seeds, right? For mm -hmm. people to say, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, thank you for the tips. Thank you for planting the seed. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm excited and um, thank you for joining us today. I know you have a really, really busy schedule and uh, I'm happy that we finally uh, got... Uh, <laughs> last time we tried to do this the zoom wasn't working so i'm really happy <laughs> that, that we got to do this and to have you here so just give um just your contact information if people need to reach you sure so uh, i always give my cell phone out because divorce is 24 7 and that's just how i advertise everywhere it's 973-309-4473 and if you Google www.divorce-dynasty.com, you will be led to my page to listen to who I am, why I formed Divorce Dynasty, and who we are. Uh, and those two things should make 
make you feel very comfortable that I'm the right call to make. And there, is there a, an email that they can reach you at? <clears throat> or would you prefer the cell? I would prefer the cell. Yeah. I, I, you know, I always have to do a, a confidential conflict search before I offer any legal advice to my clients to make sure that the other side to the conversation hasn't Got consulted it. you know, one of my partners. So when somebody calls me, I say, thanks for making the call. Give me your full name, his name or vice versa. I run the search and then I invite them in. And, and I love that hour that I give of my time uh, anybody that comes in through GDs, I mentioned to you, gets an hour complimentary with me. And I love just seeing like the stress go from here to here. Right, right. And I should mention too, I keep saying moms, but dads, <laughs> dads need you too. <laughs> divorce, is, divorce is gender neutral. And what started as an all female platform over four years ago, Divorce Dynasty is now, you know, gender neutral. Obviously we have certain male professionals on the platform. And yes, there's a lot of men in the state of New Jersey that are the stay at home dads mm -hmm. and that have the same questions that our female clients have. There's a lot of successful women that we're dealing with, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely gender neutral. And when it comes to emotion and divorce and the psychology of it, people are only people. You, your heart is your heart, your brain is your brain you hurt. We all hurt the same way, right? Um, how we deal with things may be different, but we all hurt the same way. So we are here for anyone that needs to prepare, protect, partner to prosper. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Perfect ending. Love it. All right, Carolina. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. You too. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed listening and it helped you gain a new perspective. To see the video version of the show, go to our YouTube channel, Robbie and Me Autism Reality. If you're interested in buying our book series, Robbie's World and His Spectrum of Adventures, the link will be in our episode description, as well as my Instagram and Facebook pages. If you enjoyed the show and you'd like more content, please be sure to hit that like button, follow us, and don't forget to leave us a great review. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to join us again on our next episode of Spectrum Perspectives. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to join us again on our next episode of Spectrum Perspectives.